Awesome. Thank you. Will you join me as we pray? Mm. Mother, Father, God, we thank you for your presence with us right here and right now. And I affirm your words. Your message is coming forward. And that my words are a meditation of my heart. And that it is pleasing in your sight. Amen. So we're talking about Thanksgiving. I was in the grocery this past week at Sprouts, in line, and three people in a row said, what, it's next week? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it kind of sneaks up on you, doesn't it? So I have a few uh, quotes or little snippets about Thanksgiving to share with you. Um, There was a little boy who was asked to pray before dinner, and before he bowed his head, he looked at the food, and he closed his eyes, and he prayed, and he said, Lord, I don't like the looks of it, but I thank you, and I'll eat it anyway. (laughs) Amen. And then Rochelle Goodrich, who wrote Smile Anyway, says, Every once in a while, God allows you to stub your toe as a kind of a reminder to be grateful for the miraculous body attached to it. And then I like this one because it it was from Anonymous, so I could say I wrote it. When asked if my cup is half full or half empty, my only response is that I'm thankful I have a cup. And then St. Paul says in Ephesians, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So today we're going to talk about being grateful and being thankful in the dark places. Being grateful for the challenges in our lives, because it's easy to show up on Sunday morning and be grateful for Sunday morning and to be grateful for the spirit that we celebrate. And it's really easy to be grateful when we're experiencing good health. And it's really great, really easy to be grateful when we sit around the Thanksgiving table and our whole family is there. Or when our loved ones are safe and happy. But sometimes we forget to be grateful when those things aren't there. We, we, in fact, sometimes we just take it for granted. And sometimes we get caught up in the tasks of life and the thoughts of love, thoughts of life, and we forget to be grateful. So the dictionary says that gratitude is the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. And the definition for thanksgiving is the expression of gratitude, especially to God. And so that's what we come forward every year and we celebrate thanksgiving and we thank God for our abundance and for the light and the love that we share in our relationships and for our health and for our wholeness. Charles Fillmore wrote, in revealing word that thanksgiving is rendering our grateful thoughts to God for his manifold blessing. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. We give thanks that this is the truth. Thanksgiving will keep our heart fresh for true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling upon ready soil, refreshing it in increasing its protectiveness. I love that image, that as we're giving thanks that we are replenishing the soil of our life, allowing things to grow, increasing its productiveness. Now we talk about gratitude as a spiritual practice and uh, this has become more and more common. Now we're even keeping, not even keeping, now we keep gratitude journals. And we're raising our consciousness and awareness about it. And we become mindful to be thankful and to say thank you and to give praise. 
And gratitude is part of our third principle. And our third principle in unity is that we create our experiences through our thinking. Everything that is made manifest begins in thought. And when we come forward with a grateful heart and grateful mind, and when gratitude and thanksgiving are the central themes, we manifest a prosperous attitude. And we focus on the wholeness and the healing of the world. Because gratitude and thank thanksgiving foster a heightened sense of good and blessedness, and it fosters our faith in divine order. I was just asking someone today when they were talking about some of the challenges they were having, uh, about how things weren't working in the, in the timetable they wanted it to work in, I said, so do you believe in divine order? And they laughed and they said, yes, of course, but it doesn't always work in my timetable, and, and that is the truth. But we know that there are no accidents in the universe. And we live with gratitude and thanksgiving, which appears, and that which appears as an accident, that which appears as a challenge, that which appears as misfortune or even a tragedy, becomes more than its appearance. We see it's an opportunity to grow and to rise above that which seems difficult or even impossible. So last year at this time, Peter Cronin comes to me. He was diagno recently diagnosed at that time with the Merkel cell cancer. And he says, watch out for Kathy, because he was kind of understanding this was it for him. And a year later, because of the miracle of modern medicine, he is free of cancer. And he gave his testimony a couple weeks ago that was very powerful. And he is living in gratitude and thanksgiving right now. And, and two years ago, Linda Burdett started saying yes to all the opportunities the universe gave her. And her world turned upside down, completely upside down. And she began ministerial school. And she's grateful. She's living with gratitude and blessings. A couple of months ago, another congregant was finding herself needing to move because she couldn't afford her apartment. And she wasn't finding one easily, very easily. And out of the blue, as she was praying, out of the blue, another congregant came forward and said, hey, we have a room. Won't you come live with us? She is living with great gratitude and blessings. Because life sometimes gives us really big lemons. And sometimes all we can see are the lemons and not the blessings that are behind the sourness. Thanksgiving is the time to remember to be thankful for our whole life, all the experiences, not just the happy good ones. Because we know that the whole life brings blessings that we have not yet encountered. Now, I titled this talk, Thankful for the Cottage Cheese. And it's a tribute to my grandma, who I've spoken to you about before. And um, my grandma grew up very poor, and most of her life she was very poor, and spent many years as a single mom raising her five children, as my grandpa, unfortunately, was incarcerated. And life was not easy. And as she got older and as regular paychecks came in and my grandpa was released and was working and there was always food on the table, one of the mild luxuries that she had was she always had cottage cheese available. And it was always on the dinner table. And every time I ate dinner with her, she would say, Bob, there's cottage cheese. And I would say, yes, Grandma, I see it, thank you. And sometimes I'd have a spoonful and sometimes I didn't. But I didn't realize what it meant to her. I didn't realize that she was giving thanks that she had cottage cheese to offer me. 
Now, Grandma made her transition when I was 22. And like all the losses that we have, I began to associate traditions with her. And I started associating cottage cheese every time I had it with her. And my mom makes it a point to always have cottage cheese in the refrigerator when I come visit. And at every holiday, she reminds me that there's cottage cheese on the table. And I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for that reminder of my grandma's love and the sacrifices that she made. But moreover, I'm also grateful that I've healed through that loss. Because each loss that comes our way is an opportunity to heal. We never forget our parents, our grandmas, our children, or anyone that we lose. We never forget them. But we learn to go on and to move on and to hold the love that they've given us through our traditions, through our holidays. And like you, I've had many challenges and difficulties in life. And, um, and through each one of them, there has been resiliency and healing. And each time, each Thanksgiving, I would come back around looking at what I was thankful for. And I gotta tell you, as I was going through those challenges, those, the deep, dark nights of the soul, um, the grief, whatever it may be, I was not thinking, oh boy, I'm grateful for this. Just like you, it is not in my consciousness for most of my life to give thanks for the pain or the challenge. Now, recently, uh, most of you know, um, Ellie Parrish and I did the Phoenix Project which was an exp exploration of grief and loss, a very personal one and a very in-depth one. And in that, we had to let go of anything that could alter our bodies, our minds in the grieving process. Ellie gave up cigarettes. Many, many years of smoking, she gave them up for that. I had to give up a medication that I had been taking for many years. And at first it went okay. You know, I have this rhythmic structure of running and journaling and meditating and pounding and all kinds of stuff to, to work it out. But it started to catch up with me. And I found myself going down, down, down and getting darker and darker and darker. And I was reluctant to return to the medications because I was so proud that I was off of them. I was so proud that I had done this 12 weeks without the medication, and yet the anxiety level was up here. And then I started having panic attacks, waking up at two o'clock in the morning. And if you've ever had a panic attack, it is fight or flight. You know, you, it is, I don't, I don't ha have any words for it except that don't have one if you can avoid it. <laughs> And so I decided to go back on the medication. And at that same time, coincidentally, divine order, I had a vacation scheduled. I only had one week scheduled. And then I went to Barbara Eldridge and said, I think I need two weeks. And she said, you need two weeks. You take two weeks. And I had two weeks to rest. And I had two weeks, actually three weeks, to allow the medication come back into my body, and I felt Robert again. One thing through that experience, this one was different. I stopped to remember to be grateful, and it was difficult. I kept thinking, there is a higher purpose for me to experience this anxiety. There is a higher purpose for me to experience this panic, this fear, this vulnerability. There's a higher purpose for this. I don't know what it is, but there is one. And I kept saying, thank you, God. I know this is going to work out. And it has. And the higher purpose always is when I go through that, or any of us go through that, is that we get an opportunity to deepen our sense of 
compassion. We get to deepen our sense of self-care. We get to deepen our sense of relating to one another when someone else is in pain. And there are others I know in our congregation who have gone through experiences with medications that were not pleasant. They were downright awful. And they've come through it. So, a lot of people don't even know that there are treatments for those kind of things, but let you know that there are, in case you're interested. And I'm grateful for, again, the advances of modern medicine, because that wasn't around 20, 30 years ago. And here we are today. And as I continue, as we continue to find the blessings in life and in our challenges, the Women of Unity did outreach to Westcare. It's a transitional program for women who are coming out of prison back into mainstream society. And they have been giving, uh, uh, collecting clothes and travel bags for that. And in this process, Westcare reached out to us to say thank you. And I'm going to invite uh, Reverend Deb to come forward and share some of the notes that they have for her. Thank you. And I want to report that they are so grateful. 20 women are now working full-time, and 27 are in school full-time out of the 87. So I have two poster boards full of thank you notes in the back, and I'll read two or three here to you today. Today I am confident because I was able to throw on a stylish outfit along with the most stylish shoes, smiley face. Being a woman isn't easy, but with all these donations, you make it that much easier, especially when a lot of us don't have families or support. God bless your hearts. Sincerely. Another says, thank you for thinking about us. We appreciate you more than you could ever know. Thanks to you, our Dress for Success Day is a success but she goes on to say i really want to let you know that all your help and generosity has made such a difference in my women's lives by allowing us to dress and feel like women whether it's for work an interview during the day or underlined going home we had a need and you fulfilled it May God bless you for your kind act. You made a difference. Thank you from the very bottom of our hearts. And the last is out on the poster board, the biggest one. Thank you. As a mother who's made mistakes, your donation to our closet of clothes has given me a chance to pick out clothes that will allow me an opportunity to feel healthy, secure, and happy. It helps me feel a form of dignity that I have not felt for some time. I appreciate all you have done. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Deb. So as we enter this time of Thanksgiving, I invite you to look over the challenges that may be in your lives, big and small and to give thanks for the opportunity, A, to be alive to deal with it, and B, to know that there are bigger blessings that are coming behind this. Paul says in Ephesians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And in James, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And as Reverend Vi says, and that's the truth. Amen.